Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Keith here. And in this video, we're gonna do something a little different. So in this video, I am, I would like to tell you my experience as a blind college student taking um, math, algebra. So again, this is a little different. A uh, couple things to note, I am doing this on the spot. So. It was a thought that came across my mind, and um, it's just one of them things. I It makes me a little nervous, so if I was to plan it out and try to put it on a schedule, then I would probably never make it. So um, this is all, you know, uh, off the dome and just trying to give it to you um, real that way. So I, hopefully my shared experience and tips for this will help someone else so uh, another thing if this video gets enough attention then this would be something that I'll do more um, more of so just to where we talk and I will actually show you a few things and that's the plan here and then if this like I said if this video does give enough to get enough attention I will do a part two where I go more in depth um, with the calculator that I used and um, even more tricks for uh, especially when I got into pre-calculus so to continue this video again I want to just tell you my experience as a blind student so in 2016 I started back into college um, at this time I had only been blind for six years and it's small town so you know it was me and I believe one other person at the time that were there. Um, so services, there wasn't very much of. Uh, but they did give us a screen reader on the computer. Um, they did, you know, give us student workers to, or provide us with student workers to help out and assist in classes. So when it comes to math, this is usually a tricky one for those who don't have any sight or even a little sight, I mean, even people with sight, math is tricky. Um, so what I did was when I went in, first of all, the professor is a big deal. So you definitely want to look at your professor ratings. You want to know that they're kind to others and will work well with you. So uh, what I, I got lucky, what I done was I, I ended up with one good professor and stuck with her all the way through uh, to college algebra and then pre-calculus was whenever I switched uh, to a different professor so um, but what I did was in pre -cal so what I done I started from pre-algebra when I went in it been a quite a few years since I've been in high school and you know I, I could see in high school and chose and <laughs> just to play and and not go to school so uh, I did finish high school but it what and what I would want it to be now so um, but in college I am pre-algebra I started off and one of the biggest things I did was I got a person to um, administer the test to me and then dictate it for me uh, dictate it to me and then um, I would provide them the answers back so you know, we get time and a half and things like that. Um, but again, the professor is a big deal. So, and then having a person to dictate the test to you is also a big deal. Um, and that should be provided to you by the college. Um, and sometimes a professor will even do it if they don't have a busy schedule. And some colleges actually require the, um, the actual disability services coordinator to do it. So, another thing that I did, I didn't take any notes. Um, some people like to use recorders. Uh, I, what I done was my teacher provided YouTube videos and then I also used Khan Academy. I, as much as I could get because when it come to text-based materials, um, the screen reader does not handle that very well or didn't then. Um, and it can be a little confusing now. So, 
the a recorder is a big thing and what i done was i watched a lot of videos put them all together and tried to collect so and then i also made sure to have a uh a student worker or even a tutor you know they're there for you so to have a tutor actually read off the paper to me what they were looking at or um a big thing was whenever I get materials from the teacher she I, I could take and have a, a tutor actually help me read through them and, and, and learn them so another thing is writing stuff down memory um, obviously your memory has to be somewhat decent but if, if you need to be if you're a person who needs to write stuff down then uh, that's one thing that I actually want to show you on the computer so I Typically, I use a screen capture service on my uh, software on my computer to capture my screen and then the voiceover, the screen reader, which I use NVDA is on right now. And um, it sounds pretty decent, but right now I'm on my iPhone actually and I'm just um, recording through it and I've got it near the computer and hopefully it sounds okay. But I'm going to be speaking everything aloud anyway. I just want you to um, get an idea. So we're going to actually work out a problem to solve for X. So let me look. Oh, let me slow this down. So we'll go. Let me get out of that. And go over here. I'm just going to slow it down real quick. Oh, 65. Okay. Alright, so I'm just in a notepad. That's it. Just a, so, I've got to get out of that. Alright, so what I, what I, what I want to do is 4x plus 12 equals 6x <clears throat> and what we're doing is we're solving for x okay so what I would do to to study a problem like this was I would type it out first so 4 x and I'm just typing on my keyboard space plus space 1 2 space equals space 6 x all right, so what I've done here is simply typed 12x space plus, or 4x, sorry, 4x space plus space 12 space equals, and then space 6x. Now, I enunciate on the spaces because, or I speak it out because I want you to know how I separated it. So it makes it a little bit easier to read through when you want to go word by word and things like that. Now, for this answer, we to solve for x, we need to first subtract get x on one side. So I'm going to subtract that 4x and then from the 6x. So what I would normally do is I have my main problem. 4x plus blank. I would go to the new line and I would say, okay, I know that I want to subtract 4x from 4x, which makes 0, so we're done. And I want to subtract 6x minus 4x. So what I would do is, is I would just say 6, six minus dash, dash, space, dash, space, 4, four and then space, equals space, 2. two. But I know it's going to be 2x, so I'd go to a new line and type 2x. Okay, and then I would come down to a new line, and then... I would type my problem out now. So I took away the 4x. I've only got a positive 12 on the left. One, two. So, and then Space. I know that it equals, equals. and Space. my leftover was 2x. So 2x. Two two. Okay. So now we know that we want to take and divide x on each side. So we want to take 2x divided by 2x, and then we want to take um, 12 divided by 2. So what we then do here is we take 
what I would normally do is take and say, I know that I want to divide, I know that when I divide 2x divided by 2x, that's going to turn into a, a 1x, so just x. So, and then I know that when I divide a 12 by the 2, I'm going to get 6. So it's going to be x equals 6 because 4 times 6 is 24, and then 6 times 4 is 24. Or 6 times 6 is 36. So then we have 24 plus 12. Okay, so 24, 34, 36, 36 equals 36. So x is equal to 6. So let me tell you where we're at. We are on the line where we have 12, e blank. 12 equals 2x. 12 equals 2x. Now, what I said I would do from here is I know that that 2x divided by 2x is going to equal 1x. It's just x. But I also have to divide because what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So when I divide that 12 by 2, it gives me a 6. So right here, I can just... If you want to write it out, 12 equals 2x. you can Blank. go to the new line and say 12 Two. Space. and then forward slash, slash Space. 2, Two. Space. equals, equals Space. 6. Six. Okay, so we know now that x Space. equals, equals Space. Six. 6. So, and that's what I would do, and then what I would do for even more complicated problems, like, tr um, monomials, trinomials, um, polynomials, I, all of those I, I would take and separate them out into smaller pieces and then keep them organized under each other and then if it got too crowded the best way was you know to have a tutor or a reader uh, write it out for you. Now this brings us to our next thing and I'm going to end it on this because I don't want to make it too long if it's not in interesting. Because, so I, I mean, I'm going out on a limb here because this is not something I would, I would normally just do. So uh, the, the last thing that I want to mention is one thing that I always had trouble with was when I would sit down with somebody, the, even a professor, the first thing they would ask me is, how do they want me, how do they want them to read it to me? So, you know, if the feller sat down and said, <clears throat> okay, Keith, well, how do you want me to read this to you? And that's what they would say. You know, I, I, I mean, I see what I'm looking at, but I don't know how to read this to you. That's what I would get. So my answer to that for you is to have them write out a problem for you because you know how you want to hear it. Okay, you know how you want to hear the signs and things like that. So, you tell them a problem, and this is just off my head, off the top. Um, let's say, I would say, okay, uh, we'll name him John. John, write this down for me. And I would tell him four, left parentheses, x plus two squared, right parentheses, equals... 2 minus 1 to the third. Okay, so then what I would have him do is I would then have him read it back to me exactly how I read it to him or her. And I would let, let them know that that's, that's how I want you to read it. I want you to read it exactly how you would read it. Um, and it's usually just as simple as that. And you're going to come across some people who don't understand or you know, but just let them know that you, you're able to do this. It's just all about accommodation and figuring it out. You know, I've always been told, uh, I had a, um, my mobility instructor right after I went blind, I went to a place to learn independent living and he told me something that <clears throat> has stuck with me for a while. And it's the three C's, competence, confidence, and consistency. So and doing those three things, you can be successful at anything, no matter what obstacles stand in your way. So 
limitations, everybody has limitations, but those limitations are usually, it, it, you can do more than you think you can do. So, and that's what I've always stood by. And especially with this math, I mean, um, that was always something I've seen that people's had trouble with. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up. And I tell you what, if, if you enjoyed this video, uh, give it a like and let me know down in the comments. I mean, if, if I get enough people interested in something like this and sessions like this, then, ha, you know, I could all I switch it up. So I, I, I'm thinking about taking this channel a long ways and just um, doing all kinds of stuff with it. So uh, let me know what you think. And if you do like it, there will be a second and I will go in depth. I have a um, Texas Instrument Calculator, the talking one, and I will gather up information and have it all prepared if this is something that you guys want to hear again. So, and like I said, if you like it, throw it a like. Um, if you don't, throw it a thumbs down too. I mean, I'm okay with that because that just gives me feedback and lets me know that, you know, uh, at least leave a comment and let me know what you thought you didn't like about it. So, uh, if you're new here, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.